all of those people who have come from the beginning to now, there was a supplication taught to them and it has to be repeated. That supplication and dua, you all have to repeat it. And so do I, if I'm a believer. And my five daily prayers will not be accepted if I don't repeat that. What is it? Oh, guide us to the straight path. The most important dua that you will ever read and say in forms of supplication is guide us to the straight path. It is compulsory to repeat that in every unit of your prayer. At times behind the Imam, the Imam does it for you. But mostly we would be doing it ourselves because how many units of prayer do you fulfill every day? So many, 17 minimum. And beyond that, there is Sunnah and Nafil, which goes on to many units or Raka'at. So Allah wants you to repeat that because the most important gift that Allah can ever give you is that he guides you to the straight path not the path of those who have earned his anger nor the path of those nor the path of those who have gone astray allah says every one of you have to say guide us to the straight path so by me calling out to allah and supplicating to him it increases the chances of myself being rightly guided the same applies anything i want on earth don't think that your capacity and your capability will singularly get you to achieve what you want. No, it won't. It is the help of Allah that will give you what you want. It's not just your capacity. There are people far more intelligent than you and I. They didn't even find the straight path. There are people who have top brains, but they are struggling on earth. Why? Because it shows you the top brain is not necessarily the richest person. Many times you find some of the wealthiest, they don't really have a school certificate because Allah wants to prove to you and I that your sustenance is not necessarily connected to your brain capacity. No, it's Allah. If Allah wants you to earn, he will put you in the right place at the right time with the right idea and interact with the right people and so on. And suddenly you will earn. What happened? Was that not Allah? It was Allah. He bestowed upon you his favor. He made you do things that gave you. But sustenance is not everything. Your wealth is not everything. Many people have wealth, but they don't have a connection with the owner of the wealth, the true owner of the wealth. And who is that? If you say, well, it's me, then you are wrong. When you came onto this earth, you came with nothing. When you leave, you shall leave with nothing. While you were on earth, you struggled to achieve something. And you strove and you worked hard and you toiled and you amassed and you collected. And all of that which you collected, not a single penny are you going to take back with you. But guess what? Allah is going to question you about every single thing that you left behind. I left it behind. What was the purpose? I left it behind. Well, one might say, well, are you trying to tell us that we shouldn't earn? No, not at all. But what I am telling you is when you earn and you achieve, connect yourself with Allah. Relate with your maker. Who are you? When you came onto the earth, you came with nothing. Allah bestowed you with things. Right now we are seated here. All of us are clothed. We have some clothing. That means Allah gave you. You can never be below zero. When you came, you were on zero. Do you not have clothes right now? Do you not have something right now? Allah has already given you more than you can imagine. Your heartbeat that is perhaps pumping without even you noticing. How many times does the heart beat in a day? On average, 136,000 times. Ask those who are heart patients. May Allah give them cure. Ask them if you skip a beat or something goes wrong with your heart or has gone wrong, you would go to the other corner of the world in order to make sure that you are dealt with so that your heart continues to pump in a proper way. You put in a pacemaker, you do your stents, you have the bypasses and so on. May Allah grant us good health. But when you were healthy, you didn't notice that your heart was pumping. Right? 
When you were healthy, you didn't notice a thing. Your heart was pumping. Today I'm looking at you. Mashallah, I see you. You can see me. What did you pay? What did you pay for your eyes to be able to see in full color, high definition, top without any need of fine tuning your eyes? What did you pay? Nothing. Nothing. Zero. You can hear me, can't you? What did you pay to have the ability to hear? What did you pay to have the ability to breathe? What did you pay to have the ability to smell? What did you pay to have the ability to walk and to talk? What did you pay to have a brain and an understanding? Allah says, all I want you to do is worship me and me alone and stay away from that which is harmful to you. And because I created you, I'm the one who knows what is harmful for you and what is not harmful. So when Allah has made something haram, you need to know it means it is harmful, whether you've understood the harm or not. It's not up to me to say, you know what? I don't understand why this is haram. So therefore I will do it. Astaghfirullah. That's wrong. You can't say that. I don't understand why this is haram, but I know that Allah made it haram. So I consider it haram. That is a believer. That is a believer. And if you are weak and you have fallen and you have faulted, Allah tells you, you know what? We want you to come back to us as soon as you can come back to us, turn to us, repent. The verses I read before you, the last verses of Surah Al-Furqan, Allah Almighty is describing the true worshippers of the most merciful. If he wanted, he could have said the true worshippers of the most severe, the true worshippers of the one who would punish because Allah Almighty is just. But Allah chooses to bless us, to give us good news and glad tidings. He says, Ibadur Rahmani, the worshippers of the most merciful, the worshippers of the most merciful, Ibadur Rahman. Who are they? They are the ones whom when they walk on earth, they tread with humility. They are humble people. They don't consider themselves a big deal because nobody is a big deal. That's the reason. If Allah has blessed you, thank Allah, be humble. Talk to the people, treat them well. You are one of an entire species on earth. The true worshippers of Allah are those whom when they walk, they, are, they walk with humility, humbleness. And when someone speaks to them in a negative way, either abuse them or swear them or mock at them or deceive them, Allah says, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا They prefer peace than to create a problem. Someone as you are walking on the street and they call you with a silly name, don't even look towards them. You say salam and you keep walking. Those are the worshippers of Allah. Allah describes them in the Quran. So Allah Almighty guides and Allah Almighty wants us to ask him and to keep asking him. And he wants us to supplicate to him and to call out to him in a hadith known as Hadith Qudsi. And for your information, Hadith Qudsi is where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is telling us that Allah Almighty has said the following. So it's not a Quranic verse, but it's the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, narrating to us what Allah has said to him to relay to us. Ya ibadi, Allah says, Oh my worshippers, Kullukum dalun, illa man hadaituhu, fastahduni ahdikum. Oh my worshippers, all of you are astray, except those whom I have guided. So seek guidance from me and I will guide you. Allah tells you, Oh man, don't think that you are upon guidance because of yourself alone. It is my favor upon you that you are guided. If you get up for prayer, don't think it was only you. Yes, Allah gave you the acceptance and made you understand and gave you the capacity and gave you the urge to want to get up for Fajr. So thank him for that. Thank him for that. I started off by saying gratitude will bring about increase. You thank Allah. Oh Allah, I thank you. You gave me the urge to get up for Fajr. You made me open my eye. You gave me a heart that wanted to get off my bed. So I got off because you made sure that I felt that I needed to get off the bed. You gave me the energy. When I got off, I made wudu. I was in time. I went, I did Salatul Fajr and I came back. Oh Allah, I thank you for that. If that happens, what will be the outcome, Allah says, we will give you increase. 
in a short time, we will give you the acceptance to get up for another prayer. What is it? Tahajjud. Why did you get up for Tahajjud? Tahajjud is the early morning prayer before Fajr. Because you loved Allah and you thanked him for getting you up for Fajr. He says, because of your gratitude, I will invite you to another prayer and I will give you the strength to get up for it. It is a prayer where the closest you can be to me is at that particular time. And more than that, when you go into sujood or prostration, you will be the closest to your Lord. You can cry to him. You can praise him and you will find the comfort of your soul and heart. That is Allah. So Allah says, together with your ability, pray, understand where it's coming from, whether it's guidance or sustenance or anything you want or your marriage or your goodness on earth, your houses, your cars, whatever it may be. It's not just you and your brain. Call out to Allah, oh Allah, grant me goodness and give me blessing in it. Because there is no point in amassing wealth without goodness and barakah and blessings. That wealth will be a means of your downfall. Look at Qarun at the time of the Prophet Musa or Moses, may peace be upon him, alayhi salam. He was given a lot of wealth, more than you and I. Allah says, we gave him so much wealth that the keys to the treasures of his wealth alone had to be carried by a group of strong men and it was difficult for them to carry just the keys. Imagine how much he had. What was his crime? Why did Allah destroy him? His crime was the more he got, the more arrogant he became. The more he got, the more he despised the people around him. The more he got, the more he unplugged from Allah. The more he got, the more he felt it's me, my brain, my capacity. And I am the one who was sharp enough to become so wealthy. Allah says, because you connected it to you, we want to show you, we're going to take it away just like that in a flash. Now, as you know, when you see someone with a nice car, we are human. It happens to me too. I look at it and say, MashaAllah, so beautiful, man. I wish I had one of those. Agreed? Agreed? You see a beautiful motor vehicle. Come on, you young guys. You can't tell me you don't look and say, MashaAllah, one day I will get a car like this, right? Or you say to yourself, one day, inshallah, I wish I can get one of these. So you see someone's house, well built, beautiful. Inshallah, when I build my house, I'm going to build it like this. Is it wrong to say that? It's not wrong to say that. It's okay. No problem. Say, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, Oh Allah, bless me. But connect it to Allah. Ask Allah, Oh Allah, grant me and grant me goodness. And you know what? When you're asking Allah and he starts to give you, become humble and thank him. Oh Allah, when I said one day I will get a car like this, I didn't even know what was going to happen. Today I can afford 10 of those cars. I thank you for it, Oh Allah. One I will use. And a big portion of my money, I'm going to look at those who don't have things and give to them so that you can be pleased with me. Because when I die, my heirs, although they would be getting from what I leave, but you have written for them their own sustenance. You have written for them their own sustenance. May Allah grant us ease. However, my brothers and sisters, it's wrong for us to forget the main focus. What is the main focus? If I ask you today, are you a believer? You're going to say yes. Do you worship Allah alone? You're going to say yes. And then if I say, what is your main focus? What are you going to say? There's only one word, one answer. Can you say it loudly? Come on. I want to hear it. What is your main focus? People of Chipata, mashallah. We know what it is. Your main focus is paradise and Jannah. Do you not agree? What do you want if Allah gave you in this world, but you don't get paradise, you lost. And if Allah did not give you in this world, but he gave you paradise, you won. My beloved brothers and sisters, your prayers will not be accepted if you don't make this dua, which is Ihdina Surat al Mustaqim. Oh Allah, guide me to the straight path. And this is one of the verses of Surah Al Fatiha which is the opening chapter of the Quran and we all know it by heart and if we don't know it we should memorize it because without this dua without this surah our prayers will not be accepted every single prayer that we read on a daily basis our five daily salah the compulsory ones 
we have to recite this surah and recite this dua so my beloved brothers and sisters recite this surah with heart memorize it and make this dua sincerely allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you to the straight path and what a blessing it is when allah guides any one of us to the straight path to the path of those whom he is satisfied with and always do remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do zikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your tongue moist in the remembrance of allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors of sustenance for you do istighfar on a daily basis and allah will increase your sustenance it's not always the brainy people the intelligent people or the most educated people who are the richest of the lot it's not like that and many a times you will see people who didn't study much very less educated has amassed a lot of wealth became very rich so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives money gives wealth to whom he wants and due to this reason strengthen your relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala study become educated allah loves the educated people and allah loves every one of you and learn about this deen educate yourself about the beautiful message of this deen and spread it with others spread it towards those non-muslim people and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you immensely if allah wants you to earn he can give you in any way he can put you in the right place in the right time so communicate with allah strengthen your bond your relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the owner of the wealth the sustainer the nourisher the cherisher the giver when you please allah allah pleases you allah gives you allah increases in you and continuously thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be a grateful slave of allah very few people in this world are grateful let's be the few people who are grateful towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah says in the quran la in shakartum la azidannakum the more you are grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more you are thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more he will increase in you so may allah forgive our shortcomings may allah give us the understanding of this deed and may allah grant us jannatul firdaus alaa Help us build a Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description.